Good morning. Coming at you live from the Higher Grounds page. It looks like someone's here. I wonder if they can hear me. <laughs> hey, there's some people there. Good morning. Coming at you from Southeast Michigan this morning in my mother's home, formerly my my Oma's home. This porch is really, really lovely. You might hear a few uh, bikers or joggers running past or uh, cars. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Mom. So this is gonna be um, short and sweet. This is the weekly Earthrise series between Higher Grounds and Earthwork Music. Check out my new swag shirt that you can get at our new Earthwork store. <laughs> Someone called me Aunt Slam. It's the best, Gerardo. Thank you. I'm loving that nickname more and more. Uh, so before I talk more about Earthrise, I wanted to sing this sort of meditation on argon. Does anybody know what argon is? Maybe it's a little early to talk about science, but um, I have some notes here about it. So we know that air is primarily made up of nitrogen and oxygen, um, but 1% is made up of argon. And argon is this magical thing. So if there's any David Suzuki fans out there, I'm a big fan. Uh, David Suzuki describes a thought experiment by the astronomer Harlow Shapley, who noted that air is 1% argon, and he calculated that a single breath contains a vast number of argon atoms. So this part is really cool. Because argon is an inert gas, we breathe it in and out without absorbing it. When you exhale, those argon atoms re-enter the air of the room to be inhaled and exhaled by others. A year from now, those same atoms will have circulated around the entire planet, and 15 of them will have made their way back to you to be breathed. Argon atoms are here from the conversations at the Last Supper, from the arguments of diplomats at Yalta, and the recitations of the classic poets. They're here from the exhalations of the dinosaurs, the whales, and the saber-toothed tigers. Air, says Suzuki, is a matrix that joins all life together, past and future, as well as present. We inhale our ancestors and exhale into the lungs of our children. Furthermore, by befouling the air and the water and the earth, we very literally befoul ourselves. So, <laughs> hey Missy, I know, right? Okay, Argon. Maybe that's not as like, you know, Zen to think about in the COVID era, but it helps us all remember that we are deeply connected. We are each other's air, we are each other. <clears throat> okay, Argon. This is a little morning meditation I wrote one day, and I think it's just supposed to be short. Good morning, star stuff. You've got a way about you. Hands on your belly. Blow up the balloon of your diaphragm. Hang there in the fullness. Until you start to let it suffuse with its splendor through every terrestrial body, isn't it something? The ancient argon of the air. It's Argon, everybody. <laughs> so check out this swag here I got. 
double-sided earthwork music cup. Oh my God. That's where my water is hanging this morning. We have a brand new earthwork store. We did a brand new earthwork relaunch. So much heart and soul went into it. And now Higher Grounds is powering our new store, which is amazing. We've been partners with them for a long time. They're one of the first fair trade companies and B Corps in Michigan. And it's just amazing to be in partnership with them. Um, so Earthrise actually is a photo and I didn't know that until recently. It was taken in 1968 by an astronaut and it went viral as it, you know, I guess in the 60s type of way it went viral, right? So it's kind of in everyone's consciousness. And Higher Grounds has some beautiful words about it and why it inspires the series. And um, in a previous post on this site and my page, you can read more about that. So each Monday at nine, there's an earthwork musician sharing and you can check out past videos on the website. Um, there is a new thing happening as well, which is a monthly subscription. So Higher Grounds is featuring Heavy Covers album this month called um, River Passage. And it's an incredible album and it has to do with the nonprofit of Higher Grounds, which is on the ground. So um, I think someone from Higher Grounds, maybe Chris Treater is gonna post that link if he hasn't already. But it's an amazing album and so keep a lookout for that. There'll be a, a record every month that's paired with coffee that tells a story and I think that's really cool. So I'm gonna share a song by David Byrne and Brian Eno next. Any fans in the house? I love, I love Brian Eno and David. Um, so this song was inspired by gospel music. It's called One Fine Day. Uh, but Brian Eno sees gospel music as conveying an act of surrender more than an act of worship. And it's something that I really connect with because I found that it's easier for me to be a skeptic and it, it feels less painful, right? To sort of front load any disappointment that might happen in life. Um, but this song is sort of a surrender to optimism and a surrender to, you know, what if things work out? And what if I put my energy and my heart into believing that things will work out. And what if I put my body on the line and my time on the line to help things work out to be more beautiful and inclusive. So David Byrne is on the same tip. He recently started this um, multimedia project called Reasons to be Cheerful. So check it out if you haven't seen that. And here's the song, One Fine Day.
One fine day. <laughs> Thanks for posting that, Chris. So, David Byrne, Brian Eno cover. Check out his project, Reasons to Be Cheerful. <clears throat> so, I'm going to close this session with my violin. And I want to give tribute to um, a person named Elijah McLean who was killed last August 2019 by police uh, for walking home while listening to music with a, um, a mask on his face, a ski mask, because he often got cold because of a medical condition. Um, I have been grappling with the fact that I didn't know about this, um, about Elijah's death until this global uprising for Black Lives Matter started. I think, I think a lot of people didn't know. And so his death is being reconsidered. His case is hopefully being reconsidered after um, worldwide public outcry. So this past weekend, there were violin vigils for Elijah because he was a violin player. And he actually used to play at animal shelters. So I'm gonna close with a little violin vigil of my own. And this is a song that's untitled.
So that song is for Elijah McLean. If you don't know about Elijah and his story, there's a Linktree website that I think Chris posted. It's got several quick actions you can take for Elijah and to help hold the police accountable who killed him. So that's it for my session. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'm gonna drink some of my Higher Grounds coffee now. If you guys have not tried this, I realize this messaging is probably backwards. It's incredible. Oh my gosh, it's my favorite coffee around. Um, stay tuned next week. I believe Nick James is doing the Earth Rise. And just tune in for an uplift. All right, love you all.